crypto is pumping. Welcome everyone to today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. The crypto market cap is up about $50 billion for the day. Let's go. Bitcoin bulls face $21,000. As sellers, a Bitcoin price wipes out the Fed FOMC losses we witnessed just the other day. And quoting Game of Trades, the big guys are loading up. Smart money confidence is at historically high levels. And quoting Charles Edwards, Bitcoin is trading at a 54% discount to its $43,000 energy value today. This level of discount only happened on two other days in the last seven years. The epic March 12th, 2020 collapse of Bitcoin at 4,800. And on February 7th, 2019, during the last cycle's bear market bottom when Bitcoin was $3,300. Also in today's show, Elon Musk faces a class action lawsuit over mass Twitter layoffs. That's right. He says he is going to lay off approximately 50% of the current Twitter staff, which is approximately 3,500 people. And there seems to be a law in place in California where you can't do mass layoffs ultimately and let that many people go. So I'll be sharing this with you. Also in today's show, Meta announces a new product allowing creators to build Instagram NFTs on Polygon slash Matic. One of the many reasons Polygon slash Matic is one of the top gainers for the day, up a whopping 20 plus percent. Also in today's show, Terra's Do Kwan is in Europe and plans to meet with authorities soon. Authorities soon. Well, he says in this tweet, all right, I'll throw a meetup conference soon to get over this hiding BS. Cops from all over the world are welcome to attend. This is going to be interesting. Also in today's show, 12 independent entities pledge legal support for Ripple, including Coinbase. I'll be breaking down the latest regarding SEC versus XRP. Also in today's show, will Bitcoin explode by over 4,600%? From the current price, well, yes, according to ARK Invest CEO, Kathy Wood, and shares her timeline in a recent interview she did for Bloomberg. She doubles down on her fiercely bullish forecast for the King Crypto. She was asked, are you still holding on to your $1 million forecast? And she answered in the affirmative. And according to Wood, Bitcoin can go above $1 million by 2030, which is an increase of over 4,600% from the current price. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. I want to give a a shout out to today's sponsor, BlockFi, the leading provider of financial products and services for crypto investors. They recently launched a new product called their BlockFi Private Client, which is a personalized approach to crypto wealth management. It allows you to recognize the full potential of your crypto investments, allowing you to earn, including negotiate crypto interest rates. And you can borrow using competitive loan rates using your crypto as collateral with no credit checks whatsoever. You can even negotiate personalized loan to value and APR when borrowing 100,000 plus, and there is no prepayment penalty. It also is a pretty amazing trading platform. I strongly encourage you to check it out. They also offer dedicated white glove service, robust risk management, and transparency you can trust. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below and set up your BlockFi private client today. And let's get it shall we? With that being shared, welcome everyone to today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, and this is podcast episode number 1094 of the Crypto News Alerts pod. And today is November 4th, 2022. Welcome to Moonvember. Taking a look at uh, Coin360 right now, you can see the entire crypto market cap is pumping and in the green, which I love to see. Bitcoin up 2.5% for the day, currently trading above 20,800 at the time of this live stream. We have Ether up 5 percent maintaining above sixteen hundred dollars while binance coin is up a whopping six and a half percent trading at three hundred and fifty dollars xrp up over seven percent trading at about 49 cents solana up over five percent trading above 33 dollars and matic is still up 18 percent for the day trading at a dollar 12. the only top crypto actually in the red today is dogecoin Go figure after its recent pump and checking out coin market cap. Let's get a refresh for the latest data. You can see we're currently sitting at about a trillion and 42 billion as the market cap. And earlier we were up over 50 billion just for the day in the past 24 hours. And the, the volume is up as well with 101 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance at 38 and a half percent and the Ether dominance on the climb at 19 And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past 24 hours. We have Loop Ring leading the pack 
up 42%, trading at 38.5 cents, followed by Matic, up 18%, trading at $1.12, followed by Lido Dow, up 14%, trading at $1.76. Below that, we have Curve Dow Token, Ave, and Litecoin. Let's go. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week, you can literally see a sea of green, which is great for the altcoin market. Only a handful actually in the red. We got Dogecoin up 46%, LRC up 44%, Omni up 42%, and AR up 30 38.5%. And, and checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Guida and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated a 30 in fear, the same as yesterday and the same as last week. Talk about deja vu. And last month was a 25 in extreme fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Guida and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity, aka BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. So there you have it. Welcome everyone just tuning in to today's episode, live stream of crypto news alerts. A lot to cover, a lot of excitement in the crypto market as we all love these pumps. Is it Moonvember? Is it time? Let me know if you feel we're likely to continue to pump for this month. I know there is a, a mixture between analysts. Some say we're likely to see and visit new lows, while others say the lows are already in. So let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below. So without further ado, let's dive right into today's Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for men. Bitcoin headed towards 21,000 on November 4th as bulls attempted to reclaim lost ground, which you can see here in the Bitcoin one hour candle chart. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and Trading View showed Bitcoin as it rose overnight to put in a new daily high of 20,700 on Bitstamp. In fact, we already surpassed 21,000 here this morning, just throwing it out there. And while so far a lower high in the hourly time frames compared to the November 1 and 2nd spikes, the move served to make up for losses, which came on the back of the Fed's interest rate hike decision. Potential for a push beyond 21,000 was limited thanks to exchange sellers stacking ass at that level. That's right, quoting a crypto quant analyst here. If you want to sell, place your order slightly lower than $21,000, which you can see in this order book chart from Binance. Now, material indicators, which provides the order book data, additionally noted that the buy side orders have been fickle friends in terms of support coming and going on the order book, quoting him here. This is why I don't trust new heavily weighted Bitcoin buy walls. It commented and fellow crypto quant contributor Martin, meanwhile, added that market sell orders were still dominant in the current setup, quitting him here. Nothing has really changed other than a lower Bitcoin price. Part of the Twitter commentary stated for the day. Now, beyond crypto, one analytic source noted a potential silver lining for risk assets more broadly in the current climate. The smart money confidence, which is SMC sentiment indicator, traditionally used for stocks, is now at a historical high. Game of Trades uh, noted, quoting him here on crypto Twitter, the big guys are loading up. Smart money confidence is at historically high levels, which is evident here in this smart money confidence chart, which is exciting to see. SMC hit highs of 0.78 in late September, with a bounce thus required in future. Now, let me know if you're currently uh, bullish for the King Crypto. And quoting Charles Edwards of uh, Capriole Investments, he makes a great point here. Bitcoin is trading at a 54% discount to its $43,000 energy value today. This level of discount only happened on two other days in the last seven years. The epic March 12, 2020 collapse of Bitcoin at 4800 and on the February 7, 2019, during the last cycle's bear market bottom uh, when Bitcoin hit. $3,300. So there you have it. So let me know in the comments below if you're currently bullish or bearish short term for the King Crypto. Where do you think the Bitcoin price is likely heading to end this year, which is now less than two months away? Do you think Bitcoin can close above 25,000? Do you think we'll, we'll close below 25,000? Throw me a ballpark number out there when I do the live Q&A. We'll address all of your predictions here later in the show. With that being shared, now let's discuss our next breaking story of the day, and that's Elon Musk laying off literally about 50% of the Twitter staff, which is approximately 3,500 employees. I heard, I don't know if this is accurate or true, but I think I heard him say somewhere on crypto Twitter the other day that it costs Twitter like over a billion dollars a month to run their business because the overhead is so high. So it seems he's trying to like 
cut that down, reduce the overhead, and bring up the profits naturally as a businessman, as any businessman would do. But with that being shared, let's dive right in. Amid Twitter beginning mass layoffs, the company employees are launching a class action lawsuit against the new Twitter CEO, Elon Musk. That's because I believe the company is out of California, probably one of the reasons why Elon wants to put the company in Texas. According to multiple sources, Musk started massive layoffs on Twitter November 4th, reducing the company's workforce to 7,500 people. The CEO was speculated to cut as much as 50% of Twitter staff, or about 3,500 people, just a few days after acquiring Twitter for $44 billion on October 27th. In response to the layoffs, Twitter employees filed the class action lawsuit against Musk in San Francisco federal court. That's right, so they are out of California and San Francisco. Bloomberg reported the suit argues that Twitter is violating federal and California laws by laying off employees without enough notice. The action specifically refers to the Federal Worker Adjustment and Re, uh, Retraining Notification Act, which restricts large companies from mounting mass layoffs without at least 60 days of advance notice. Renowned civil rights attorney Lisa Bloom argued that Musk has completely ignored the law, which applies to all California employers of more than 75 employees. Quoting Lisa Bloom here on Crypto Twitter, this worn law applies to all California employees of 75 plus employees, which obviously includes Twitter with its thousands of employees. Purpose of the law is to give laid off employees time to figure out how to handle this disruption and Elon completely ignores it. And she continues, employers like Twitter who violate the Warren Act face civil penalties of $500 a day for each violation with thousands of employees. This can be significant though, maybe not to Elon. So there you have it. Very interesting indeed. Now, Shannon Lease Riordan, the attorney who filed the class action lawsuit on November 3rd, said that all Twitter employees should be aware of their rights. The employees should not sign away their rights and that they have the avenue for pursuing their rights, the attorney noted. Lisa also is known for suing Musk's electric car firm Tesla over similar claims back in June of 2022, when Musk cut about 10% of its workforce. Tesla eventually won the case and closed door arbitration instead of open court. While Musk reportedly described the Tesla lawsuit as trivial, it appears that he is repeating the same playbook of what he did at Tesla, she stated. Now, the layoffs are a part of many changes taking place at Twitter amid Musk's takeover, including paid account verification, which I am looking forward to. I cannot wait to get a blue check next to my name. I've been paying for Twitter blue for a long time, and it came with no check. Just saying. According to the reports, Twitter is still charging for Twitter verification starting on November 7th. Let's go. Mass dismissals are not exclusive to Twitter, as many companies around the world have been cutting their workforce amid the ongoing technology industry slowdown, or should we say shakedown. Tech giants, including Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, have been either freezing, hiring, or cutting jobs for months, and many crypto companies have also been affected, according to the impact of the ongoing bear market or adding to the ongoing impact of the crypto market, according to data compiled by CoinGecko, cities like San Francisco, Dubai, and New York are the hardest hit by crypto layoffs in 2022 to date, which is shared in this chart. Cryptocurrency companies in San Francisco, Dubai, and New York hardest hit by layoffs in 2022 to date. So after San Francisco, Dubai, and New York, we have Singapore, Vienna, Jersey City, Sao Paulo, London, Hoboken, Mache, Mexico City, Buenos Aires, Las Vegas, Brisbane, and Melbourne. And the news comes after the New York Stock Exchange delisted Twitter as it's no longer a public company. They moved it to private and other crypto-friendly trading platforms like eToro and Robinhood also delisted Twitter shares from their platform. And according to estimates from the research firm Bot Sentinel, Twitter may have lost more than a million users or 877,000 accounts since Musk's takeover. But let's not forget, many of these accounts were obviously bots were they not? Major global crypto exchange Binance also invested $500 million, which is a half a billion, to take the share of equity at Twitter. Binance CEO Shengping Zhao, shout out to CZ, said that the investment has a high potential in terms of monetization, free speech in the crypto community, as well as the opportunity to eventually help bring Twitter into Web3. So there you go. There you have it. What are your thoughts surrounding Elon laying off half of his workforce at Twitter, do you think this was a smart move to reduce the overall cost associated with running Twitter? Or do you feel that, you know, what are your honest thoughts? Just let me know in the comments below. And Web3, do you believe that Twitter can be a protocol for Web3 and true 
free speech or do you feel that this is just a carrot they dangle in front of our faces and that we'll never have true free speech until we have true web three let me know your thoughts in the comments below and with that being shared now let's dive into one of these altcoins which has been the top gainer for the past 24 hours and that's polygon matic i've been very firmly bullish on this crypto i've been talking about here very frequently on the show so let me know how many of you are also bullish on matic which is a layer two scaling solution on the ethereum platform and today it surpassed i believe like uh let's actually look at the charts We'll see where we're at right now. Taking a look at Coin360, you can see Matic is currently trading at $1.13. I know earlier today I saw it above $1.15 and it was up over 20%. And again, one of the top gainers. So now let's discuss why in the world is Matic pumping so hard? Let's dive right in, shall we? Social media giant Meta is announcing a new feature to allow creators to make their own NFTs and sell them directly on IG. The NFTs will be minted on Polygon Matic, which surged 12.5% over the last 24 hours, now at about 18%. Uh, Quitting them here, creators will soon be able to make their own digital collectibles on Instagram and sell them to fans both on and off Instagram. They will have to end-to-end -to -end toolkit from creation starting on the Polygon blockchain and showcasing to selling. People can easily support their favorite creators by buying their digital collectibles directly within Instagram. The company says that the new product will enable people to show their appreciation to their favorite creators and will be initially tested with select creators in the United States. Meta is rolling out this new feature after giving Facebook and IG users across 100 countries the ability to share their NFTs on both platforms. The company made the announcement during Creator Week, which aims to empower people to create engaging content. Now, Meta's head of commerce and financial technologies, Stephanie Carriel, says that California-based firm sees the increasing adoption of Web3 tech and beneficial for the 300 million people worldwide who identify themselves as creators. Quoting them here, we believe Web3 tech, like blockchain, will positively enhance the economic model for creators by giving them the ability to create new types of digital assets to monetize and enable better and more sustainable ways for them to build their business. So there you have it. And also, I got to throw out there that another reason that Polygon slash Matic has been pumping major partnerships with the likes of companies like Disney. This will do that. You know what I mean? And so there's just a lot of exciting things going on in development. And also, let's not forget that using Ethereum with the gas fees is absolutely outrageous right now. Oftentimes, it'll cost more in gas fees than the transaction you're trying to send. So Polygon Matic is necessary to reduce those gas fees. And that's why it is a layer two scaling solution for the Ethereum blockchain. And one of the many reasons why I continue to be bullish on Matic. So there you have it. And now let's break down our next story of the day. We know that Do Kwan has been on the run. He is the, the dude behind Terra slash Luna and their not so stable coin, which lost billions of dollars from investors. Unfortunately, he has been on the run allegedly since then, but he always tweets and says, yo, you may be looking for me, but I'm not on the run. Catch me if you can, like the gingerbread man. But without further ado, let's dive into uh, this story because this is actually pretty interesting. The notorious co-founder of Terraform Labs, Do Kwan, is said to be in Europe. He vowed to organize a conference soon and lift the curtain on his mysterious location. The South Korean, who is pr the primary target for Interpol, which is like the international police uh, enforcement agency. Uh, yeah, they want to participate in this event and capture him as soon as possible. Terra's colossal crash in May caused multi-million in investor losses and fused panic in the entire crypto space. Logically, numerous people were affected uh, as individuals and South Korean regulators turned to the project's co-founder, Do Kwon, to identify what prompted the collapse. The developer seemed reluctant to cooperate and left his homeland. Multiple sources in the past months hinted that he was frequently changing destinations from Singapore to Dubai to Seychelles to Macharora. I don't even know how to pronounce these cities he's going to, be in some of the spots. And a recent coverage disclosed that his latest location may be Europe. Quoting them here, Quan's passport has been invalidated as of today, and it is understood that he is currently in Europe, reporter Lee Du Yoon claimed. And in a tweet, the 31-year-old South Korean promised to reveal his whereabouts and invited police officers to attend the event. The balls on this guy, <laughs> quoting him here. All right, I'll throw a meetup conference soon to get over this hiding BS. Cops from all over the world are welcome to attend. And then he says, pew, pew, and he has a water pistol. Very interesting fella, to say the least. And he also tweeted, for those of you that have been spreading falsehoods on the taxpayer's dime, you are invited to the VIP honors and will even pay for your plane ticket. Show up if 
you dare. He just continues talking reckless. This dude makes up complete bullish for political reasons. Not true. Claims sovereign immunity. And I don't even know what he's even talking about at this point. But it's interesting nonetheless to follow this. Do you think they are likely to capture Do Quan in Europe? Do you think he'll likely come forward? be arrested? Do you think he'll get away with all of these shenanigans? Let me know your honest two Satoshis in the comments right down below. With that being shared, now let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss XRP versus the SEC. And this is interesting because 12 independent entities pledge legal support for Ripple, including Coinbase. So let's break this down, shall we? Here we go. Fintech firm Ripple is garnering some more support from the crypto and financial industry in its ongoing battle with the US SEC. On November 4th, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse proudly tweeted that the number of companies, developers, exchanges, associations, and investors officially supporting the firm has reached 12. It's kind of like Jesus and his 12 disciples. Just saying. The pile of amicus briefs being filed is mounting up, according to Ripple Labs General Counsel Stuart Al Orati. The amicus brief is a legal document filed in appeal cases to aid the court by providing extra relevant information or arguments. These briefs are filed by amicus curiae, a Latin phrase that translates to friends of the court. It is unprecedented, I am told, to have this happen at this stage, Garling House exclaimed, quoting him here, for those of you keeping count, 12 briefs submitted. It's unprecedented, I'm told, to have this happen at this stage. They each explain in their own unique way the imperable harm that the SEC will do to every facet of the U.S. crypto economy if it gets its way. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Brad Garlinghouse. And on November 3rd, the SEC filed a motion to extend the time to file all reply briefs until November 30th. It asked Judge Torres to order that any additional advocates briefs be filed by November 11th. Now, this person mocked the SEC's response, claiming that the agency needs more time not to listen or engage, but to blindly bulldoze on. Garlinghouse had previously hoped for a conclusion in the first half of 2023, but with the evidence mounting, the SEC could drag it out even longer. Good Lord, could you imagine this lawsuit being dragged out all across 2023? The most recent amicus brief was filed by Cryptilian Payment Systems on November 3rd, as confirmed by defense lawyer James Fillon who shares here, Cryptilian Payment Systems, an online digital wallet service for retail customers and commercial retail businesses using XRP, asked to file an abacus brief supporting Ripple's opposition to the SEC's motion. So there you have it. And Very Dow also joined the list of Ripple supporters on November 3rd with its own amicus brief. That growing number of supporters that have already filed briefs include Coinbase, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, the Crypto Council of Innovation, the Blockchain Association, Val Hill Capital, iRemit, Spend the Bits, Tap Jets, and Investor Choice Advocates Network, and John Deaton on behalf of more than 75,000 XRP investors. Now, the U.S. securities regulator took action against Ripple back in December of 2020, accusing the company and its executives of conducting an unregulated security sale of its XRP token. And almost two years later, could you imagine this is still going on? The battle is still raging on, but support for Ripple is growing as its case strengthens. Garling House has previously stated that XRP will consider a settlement with the SEC, providing that the XRP is not classified as a security. So there you have it. What are your thoughts uh, surrounding this lawsuit? Do you think that XRP is likely to be deemed a security and that the SEC will win? Or do you think this will be a big fat victory for crypto and XRP and that the SEC will finally lose and be proved that they are overreaching and they'll have to step down? Either way, let me know your two Satoshis. I think the SEC does this to shake down companies extract as much money as they can. They go after this company, that company, 100 mil here, 100 mil there. It's very unfortunate because I don't feel they have our best interest at heart, which they claim is to protect the investors. Because obviously, by doing this ongoing lawsuit for two years, they didn't protect any XRP investors. If anything, they only hurt them because the price of the crypto obviously crashed and the price has been suppressed for almost two years. So I cannot imagine this going on for another year. But hopefully, we get an end to it soon, potentially before the end of the year, or as Brad Garlinghouse says, hopefully before the second half of 2023 especially considering that the halving is in 2024, which will send the entire crypto market parabolic. But without further ado, let's now dive into the story you have all been waiting for, and that's Kathy Wood doubling down and reiterating that she stands strong by her $1 million plus Bitcoin price prediction by the year 2030. So let's 
break this down, shall we? And shout out to Kathy Wood, founder and CEO of investment management firm ARK Invest. Kathy Wood is doubling down on her fiercely bullish forecasts for the king crypto. Let's freaking go. Asked in a new Bloomberg interview whether ARK Invest is still holding on to the $1 million forecast. Wood answers in the affirmative. According to Wood, Bitcoin can go above $1 million by 2030, an increase of over 4,600% from the current price. Send it. Let's freaking go. Oh, yes, more than a million dollars by 2030, she says. And on Bitcoin adoption by institutional investors, the ARK Invest founder and CEO says that the drop in the flagship crypto's asset price by around 70% from its all-time high is triggering increased interest from hollowed class of investors. Quoting Kathy here, it does appear that institutions are moving in. They're taking this price decline from nearly $70,000 to roughly $20,000 as an opportunity to move into a new asset class. And according to Wood, institutional investors' interest in Bitcoin was piqued by the Boston, Massachusetts-based investment advisory firm Cambridge Associates four years ago, as she says here. In 2018, Cambridge Associates, which is a consultant for the institutional space, basically said to its clients, okay, you may not like this thing called Bitcoin. It may sound like a Ponzi scheme to you, but it's acting like a new asset class. And that got their antenna up because that what institutional investment managers cannot miss is a new asset class that will diversify the portfolio, meaning lower the correlation of the returns. And Bitcoin is doing that. So there you have it. And to watch this latest interview, she did Kathy Wood with Bloomberg entitled Arks Kathy Wood on the Economy, Tech, Musk, Twitter, and Bitcoin. Check the show notes below the video.